voyage is、uh, very lonely, but also you you feel comfortable with that loneliness. And for myself, I had to become a teacher before I came became myself. <laughs> so, you, you know, it's because my teacher had died, and I was put in this position that I wanted to fulfill because of my love for him. But I didn't know who I who I was, also. So after many many years, then that came came those two opposites came in together, and that makes for a very、uh, much more relaxed and comfortable position. It's not like I have to do this ceremony. I have to do this, but actually, there's not much to do. Things that will just actually get done. They talk about not doing. It's really true. But in the beginning, I have to do this. I have to do that. I have to do this ceremony. I have to remember this. But later on, it begins to fall into place with that kind of trust and faith. After meeting Suzuki Roshi, and、uh, that's what inspired me—not to become a monk, but just to be like him. Yeah, that's that's what inspired me. And then later on, he asked me, "Would you, would you?" Uh, I would like to ordain you, and he also said that you can ask your wife if that's all right, and she could sign, <laughs> you could sign a piece of paper acknowledging it. So he considered her also because he had a big family, and and so that's that's what、um, that's why I ended up being a monk. But I had no idea what it was going to be or how it would unfold. I practiced with Suzuki Roshi like for ten years, and、uh, I was very、uh, quiet, <laughs> very、uh, hardly talked, and very extremely shy and, and very introverted. And so, I, in one year,、uh, we we maybe had a dokusan once a year and one one sashin once a year, until it started moving up. And so, what happened was that one.、Uh, Doksan,、uh, I went in there, and、uh, I I was very very、uh, afraid to make a mistake in front of Roshi. I wanted to do everything perfect because I loved him so much and respected him. And so he he saw me how stiff I was probably, and I didn't say anything in front of him. So he, he got out a piece of paper and a pencil. And he said, "Could you write your name here?" <laughs> And and then、uh, I did that, and then he said,、uh, because my father he knew my father was a Chinese doctor, an herbalist, and he said that maybe in the evening you could have a glass of wine before you went to bed, <laughs> so I could be relaxed. <laughs> That's how kind of uptight I was. There was.、Uh... Kind of a very light feeling about him, and almost、uh, just the opposite of Rinpoche. Rinpoche was something、uh, solid and、uh, just very round with no seams, and and that kind of presence. And Suzuki Roshi was just the opposite.、Uh, almost a feeling of、uh, he was there. He was present, of course. But at the same time, there was a lightness, and、uh, almost like no one was there. And oftentimes, he would talk with his eyes closed, and and he he was going somewhere inside to verbalize. So and Rinpoche, just like I was explaining, like how the sun, the sun element in the Vajrayana tradition, and then the moon element in the Zen tradition. They both.、Uh, it's exactly what I'm trying to express. One is very, very、uh, visceral and physical, and round with no seams, and the other one's very airy. But there's there's still a presence there, and those are just、uh, two general descriptions of of the person. And yeah, that's that was my feeling. And when his son. Who's also a Roshi, a Hoitsu Suzuki Roshi. When he talks, he talks in the same way. And 
and it's a good way to collect yourself when you talk. And uh, in, in the Western sense, people aren't quite used to it, but it, it it's kind of like a a pause, uh, a nice deep pause that you go back to the source, and you, then you verbalize again. I also watched a lot of Japanese movies. I was telling uh, the residents um, the other day that just before uh, San Francisco became the Zen Center, uh, we used to, uh, I have a family, so we used to sneak through the, the meditation hall on 1881 Bush Street and, and go through the kitchen and into the balcony because it was a big theater to see the samurai movies. I was fascinated with them, and because there was a, there was a lot of spirit, strength, uh, and and a lot of that is missing now. That spirit and strength. And at the same time, when we were sitting down to get comfortable, we looked in the corner, and there was a Zukuroshi also watching the movies. Also, I taught myself how to chant these primordial chants from watching those movies. No one taught me. But it had the spirit. You knew, you knew there was a presence there that you could um, bring forth at will, because you're you're not doing it for yourself. You're doing it for everyone. So that's that's how I could do these things. <laughs> we have a, a very traditional practice here, actually, and I would like to keep it that way, because this is traditional. Uh, in that it's done, you know, since since Buddha's time, the practice, and it's been refined in different countries. But at the same time, I'm also uh, excited and anxious at the new blood, the young blood, and uh, we'll do something different, but keep it at the same frame as as it based on the foundation of zazen practice, the tradition. So I'm I'm thinking of a, like a, even uh, the hills, His Holiness the Karmapa. He must have different ideas because he's young. Although he's been trained traditionally than the Dalai Lama, and that's what makes it exciting. Uh, you you have an, the old tradition, and then you have the new tradition coming and merging. That's that's what I'm excited about because it can't. It can't be the same. Uh, even His Holiness knows that. I mean, his his situation is more urgent and critical. But it can't it can't be the same. But it can adapt from the origin. Yeah, because the origin is is the foundation, the source, which can change into anything. But as long as you have the source, the foundation, then anything can grow out of it. And I think that's what keeps makes the Dharma. Or the Zen alive.